You know, I really like big box PC games, as you might be able to tell. I've collected them for a long time, and it just... There's, there's something about everything about them that makes me want them. I, I have to have them. I go into the stores, or at least I did back in the day, software, etc., Best Buy, wherever. You see the box, you see the artwork, the way it's designed, and you think, I've got to play this. I've got to have it on my shelf. i got to show it off to my friends, or maybe on the internet sometime in the future, which is, of course, what this video is going to be. So for the third time now here in LGR, Let's take a look at some of my favorite big box PC game covers, uh, package designs, all that good stuff. I love these things. So the first one I want to take a look at today is actually one we've seen in a previous video on this subject. That is the original Sid Meier's Civilization. And in that one, I didn't know exactly what the source of this image was. I couldn't find it out in the credits or anything, but it came to my attention. And forgive me, I can't figure out who told me this. It was somebody on Twitter. I can't find out what it was. But anyway, this was actually an uncredited photo rendition of sorts made for an advertisement for some sort of local Egyptian exhibit in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, which is why that city in the background highly resembles Charlotte around 1989, 1990 or so. That's really cool. I, I like finding out the history of these things like that, so thank you to the anonymous person or persons who told me about that. And uh, well, I here's something though that I really just can't figure out whatsoever. Maybe somebody else can help me with this one today after this video because this is Cyberball. And it is not related to the other Cyberball type games that you've seen on all sorts of other systems. This is an MS-DOS pinball game. It's all cyberpunk and futuristic. I mean, this wouldn't look out of place somewhere in System Shock, for instance. I just love this reddish orange and cool blue kind of conflict going on here, which has nothing to do with the actual game itself. This game kind of sucks, but it's got an incredibly cool box. I just like looking at this. Speaking of games that I was not a really big fan of, well, I, I do like Riven more than Myst. I didn't like Myst a whole lot, but yes, this is Riven, the sequel to Myst. One of the most captivating boxes I ever remember seeing as a kid back in 1997. In fact, I think I saw this in a library and it was just sitting there on the shelf and I was like, holy crap, Myst looked awesome and this looks even better. And, uh, well, it turns out it was. This is a really awesome game, even without the box art. It's just a really cool game. But this box in particular, that is so cool. I, I love this tree with the ball and, the, you know, all that crap going on. Forgive me, I don't know the term for what that exactly is in game. I've never beaten the game, but I love this. It's so gray and yet hopeful somehow. I mean, there's a light emanating from in the midst of this darkness. Really striking. Here's a game that is just oh, absolutely excellent. This is Sanitarium by ASC Games, released in 1997. A shockingly disturbing adventure, as if you needed to be told that. Just look at this eye! <laughs> demons from the past can torment you. Well, yeah, I believe it. Look at this guy. He's seeing some demons right there. This is just a dark and disturbing and twisted and just fantastic adventure game. I remember seeing this cover in 1998, I believe, in a Best Buy. It was just sitting there next to stuff that looked absolutely boring in comparison. That eye <laughs> is tearing through these bandages and whatnot. This one was actually put together by Cindy Wheating and Todd R. Emerson. They also did the Jeff Gordon XS Racing and, and many others. But yeah, this is the one that stands out absolutely the most to me. Another one that I saw in Best Buy had to have it for a few reasons. For one, this is just great. A very kind of monochromatic going on here. A little bit of yellow, just to tell you there's a mouse pad and there's an NYPD do not cross like crime thing, but just the red, the black and white. This really sums up a lot of the game itself. There's a lot of black and white sort of narrative in terms of like what's good or what's evil. And then it gets sort of ambiguous. Everything is shadowy. And then of course, all the blood. Such a cool cover. It looks like a graphic novel. Makes sense because a lot of the game is in a graphic novel style. And yes, it does in, in fact still have the mouse pad in there. The mouse pad looks just like this cover, which is great because I love this cover. And this is yet another one that I can't exactly determine 
who put it together, but it really, I mean, it could be anything, just artwork from Remedy. Uh, James Quinlan was credited as the packaging designer, but that doesn't always mean the person that created the art that's on the packaging, they just put it together. So yeah, either way, excellent box. Now here's one that I have no remorse whatsoever for including on my list, and that is Crusader uh, No Regret. <laughs> Not No Remorse. As much as I like the No Remorse cover with its vaguely Boba Fett looking silencer on the front here, it's the No Regret cover that really just makes me happy in artistic places. It's got this mech in the background that looks like it's made of concrete, just blowing up everything. And the silencer dude here just like, yeah, I'm gonna take these things out and grr, no regrets, no regrets. Mm. It is a very masculine cover. I will admit that, but it's also just got more going on. It's got the, the shadows coming in from the top right over there. There's this vague light on your guy, but the rest of him is being lit up by the flames and explosions made by this concrete mech. <laughs> it's just so cool to me. No regret. I, I like that as a title better too. It's, either way, both of them are great covers, but if I had to choose, yeah, I'd go with no regret. Now, who was the artist for that one? Well, it was actually the same artist as this one right here, which I also want to show off. This is Abuse, and both uh, the Crusader game box covers and this for Abuse here were put together, painted, whatever, designed by Sam Yates. And he's got a thing for flames, <laughs> I suppose, and cybernetic looking dudes. And there's that same exact art style in the abuse character here that you get with the silencer and the crusader covers it's that very soft kind of lighting that's on there and that just it, it appeals to me almost like in an airbrushing sense i like the style of the flame that it, it looks fake it almost looks like cheese <laughs> it's very fascinating to me unfortunately my box is a little uh beat up here but you know that's what happens when you give your box a lot of uh, attention. I don't know where I was going with that at all. Ugh, I wish, I wish I knew who put this one together because this cover is surprisingly good to me. This is a game called Sidewinder released by Arcadia and this was a subdivision of Mastertronic and this was actually an arcade game at one point and then it was on the Amiga, I think originally, and then ported over to the arcade, the PC, Atari ST, and such. And my word, that is just a lovely bit of sci-fi art here. I like the glowing nature of everything. Of course, there's that Sidewinder logo, which that could be right off the cover of the Metal Album of the Year 1986, but it's even better, I think, as this top-down shooter. I like this style of art a whole lot. It reminds me of those old sci-fi books that I would get by Usborne Publishing and, and several others, just looking at the future, like, this is what the future could look like. It's curvy, and yet it's tech. There's still birds and trees, but there's lasers and, like, force fields over the planet. Perfect. Just, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh my god, this game is awesome. Yes, it is, game fan. Yes, it is. This is Shiny's Sacrifice. Really excellent game. I, I've been meaning to cover this one and like a full video for so long, but I'm at least going to talk about this cover because it's one that I, again, was always drawn to in the stores. I mean, you got the ethereal alien evil head thing with the claw hands and the orb of power crap going on. It's like, oh no, things are not good. But then you got the one dude standing against it, repelling this evil and as a sacrificial whatever, maybe because of the name. Like it just, it got my attention. And then of course it was just also by Shine and I knew that something good would be happening here. Another thing that's sort of interesting about this is that the cover was put together by Paul Cox. He's the one credited for this, but this is his only art credit or box art credit that I can find. After this, it looks like he went on to be a service level coordinator for Blizzard. And, you know, I mean, if you're going to have one box, though, to, uh, to your name, this is a good one right here because it's brooding and threatening and uh, it's good. Another very threatening one. I love this. Okay. There are several boxes for the House of the Dead here by Sega. And yes, this did come out on PC. In fact, pretty much all of them have. And 
this is the Sega PC original release for House of the Dead, and this just has the best art of any of them. The other ones, some of them have like uh, expert software, the same basic art on the box, but it's much smaller and it's cropped. But this one, you can see the whole shebang. It's wonderful. You got your dude there with terrible voice acting, shooting these hideous zombie alien wraith creatures just coming in out of the window. <laughs> it's so representative of what goes on in the game. Like this guy is going to be inserting another credit at any moment because he has to. I mean, things are not, not good here. Brains are being blown all over the place. There's blood hanging off their fingers and guts and it's just House of the Dead. And I don't know how much you can see it, but it's got an interesting method of embossing. Like, it's really detailed around all these gory bits. Like, you look scratched at first, but no, like, those are all the individual hairs of these zombie demon dudes and it's wonderful. Super well-made box. Here's a game that's known for a lot of things, but not necessarily always its box art. This is Mega Race. In this future, speed that kills isn't enough. Or, you've got to fight to finish. Yeah, I guess they decided they didn't like that tagline when they put out this uh, secondary release here, and they also got rid of the borders and, you know, put in this border instead. The diamond studded metal and everything. I don't like this one as much. There's too much crap going on. This one. This one's nice. This is like a graphic novel kind of thing, or you know, almost something that you would see on a Hot Wheels Matchbox play set from a post-apocalypse. <laughs> it's just, it appeals to me on that sort of nine-year-old level of, man, cars are cool, and explosions, and Blade Runner-esque stuff going on in the background. The sky is red, everybody's out to kill you. This just, I want to live in that world for some reason, I don't know. I, it's probably just all the media that I grew up with. It's just like, yeah, you could get along in a world like that where all you had to do was shoot everyone. And like the previous box, House of the Dead, I don't know who drew this, put it together, painted it, whatever. There's no credits at all. And man, that's just a shame. There are so many awesome pieces of artwork and games that I just can't find credits for. You would think these people would want their work known, or maybe they just wanted to make sure that nobody knew so they couldn't have their employees stolen. I don't know. Either way, it annoys me. Well, here's one that I absolutely know who put it together, because thankfully Bethesda credits their artists. This is an Elder Scrolls Legend Battle Spire. Not a particularly good game. In fact, it infuriates the crap out of me, but it does have this wonderfully vivid, silhouetted pose of this vampire lady with the thing and all that. I, I don't know what those are exactly, but it's neat. It's got the moon and a crescent kind of shaped weapon which works with that. It just comes together very well. Draws you right into the middle of it. This one is put together by Mark K. Jones, and man, this guy, he did graphics for a lot of games, like in-game graphics and stuff, for companies like Houston Consultants and Core Design, but he also did, of course, the cover for this, and Bethesda's Skynet, which is another fantastic box, perhaps that will show up in a future episode. And finally, the best game box I think I have ever seen in my life, that would be McDonald Land. I am joking. It is almost April 1st. Ha ha, fooled you. Not really. This is Mage Slayer. Well, this one I mentioned in a previous video. <laughs> I love it. This is pure goth art evil with death and darkness and skulls and bones and swords. It reminds me very much of like the covers for Hexen and Doom and some Dungeons and Dragons and Collector's Card Games. And guess what? It's done by the same guy, Gerald Brom. He is a master of this style of art. So go check out his portfolio on his website. It's full of stuff like this. It may not be to your particular liking. I know some people that think this is really tacky, but I don't. I can't help it. It's that sort of heavy metal mid-90s era thing for me that's just like, yes, this is awesome. It's made by Raven, and they did such good stuff back then. I miss that company, and I miss boxes like this that you just look at on the shelf, and you're like, I want to install this on my hard drive, even if it needs an exorcism afterward. Well, that's it for this episode of the best PC game box art that I've got. Of course, I have got way, way more to choose from, so let me know in the comments what some of your favorites are, and check out the other videos that are in the series, which I will be linking to right about now. Watch those, see if I've covered some of the things that you think would make sense on a list like this. And otherwise, just stay tuned for future episodes every Monday and Friday here on LGR. Thank you very much for watching.